And he said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That he wants us, his desire is one day we will behold the glory that he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. You read Colossians 1, dealing with the problem of his deity. You see it in if, uh, Hebrews chapter 1. We see it in the book of Revelation. He's the Alpha and Omega. The idea is being in the form of God. And it says... He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Robbery there is the Greek phrase that means something to be grasped at. You know, he was God. He was omnipotent. He was omniscient. He was ever-present. All of the attributes of God is, are in Jesus Christ. He's the creator. Nothing was made without him. In the beginning was the word. The word was, was God, was with God. He, he was there. And he thought at that point in time, it says that that was nothing to be grasped at. Because God is love. What was to be grasped at in his heart was your benefit and my benefit. Lost mankind. That was what was to be grasped at. That God can't be ambivalent, he can't be distracted, he can't be neutral, because he is love. And it's not his will that any should perish. So he enters, he enters into a descent. You know, it's hard for us to understand. Theologians argue about this. We'll look at this for the rest of our life, we'll grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. Islam, one of their struggles is, they hear that Jesus was the Son of God. And a Muslim will struggle with that because, you know, on the Dome of the Rock, I've been there many times in the Temple Mount, it says, God is not begotten, neither does he beget. Because in their mind, they think, well, that's ridiculous. How can God have a biological son? Does but, but what it's telling us here, it's not that, it's the incarnation. It's God himself. And if he is God, he can do whatever he pleases. And he took on human flesh. Why did he do that? Look. If you, if you, I heard someone give the example was if you knew on your, on your street, there's a, uh, you know, there's a, there's an annual and they're going to open up the fire hydrant. They're going to wash the street and you know, they're all going to be killed. They're all going to drown. They're all going to be wo washed away. Go on. How would you warn them? You know, if you stand over the end hill and say, yo, everybody out, all the little ants fall over with heart attacks. You know, some giant there. Are you going to, you know, you learn ant language, ant Morse code. You're going to send them an ant mail, you know, uh, you know, or you get on social media with them. What are you going to do? Well, Jesus Christ, what he did was he became an ant to walk among us. God took on skin to look into our eye, to walk with us, then to take our place in death and be that substitute. Do I understand? No. Is that easily comprehended? Impossible. That's what faith is for. And listen, for you and I to become an ant is way less demeaning than what he did. It says that, that God lays out the heavens with the span of his hand. David says, Lord, when I consider the sun, the moon, and the stars, the work of thy fingers, what is man that thou art mindful of? That God laid out the universe between his thumb and his index finger, 20 billion light years. Solomon dedicated the temple and said it's impossible to build a building that God would fit in. 